بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام والأتمان الأكملان على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما نافعا وعملا متقبلا آمين يا رب العالمين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العظيم أما بعد Dearest viewers Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh With you is your brother Muhammad Shakir And the first of a series of podcasts inshallah Today we will be looking at the reality of life If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us the tawfiq and the ability In order for us to understand this The concept or the, the reality of life We need to understand our position we need to understand our position in the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal, the purpose for which we have been created, and from there we can take some direction, inshallah. So the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could be broadly broken up into four different categories. The first is Jamad, second is Nabat, third is Hayawan, and the fourth is Insan. So Jamad, Nabat, Hayawan, Insan. Jamad refers to solids, that which is solid. This is solid, the table is solid, um, mountains are solid, rock is solid. So this is, these are known as Jamad. <coughs> jamad has fixed dimensions. So it will have a length, it will have width, it will have height, and it has a fixed dimension and it remains in its position unless it is moved. And in the most cases in terms of the natural creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of mountain etc these are, are emotionless and they remain fixed in their, in their position obviously un unless there is a natural phenomena and there happens, happens to be a shift in, uh, in, in that location by way of an ex uh, by way of a volcano or, or an earthquake but it's a different topic so that's the first of the creation of Allah which is Jamad the second of the creation of Allah is Nabat Nabat has the same as Jamad, so it has dimensions, length, width, height. But in addition to these three, we add on to that Numu, and that is growth. So Nabat grows. And Nabat could be, Nabat is, we could loosely term as vegetation or plantation. So for example, we have a, a tree, uh, a flower, a fruit tree, vegetable tree, a normal tree. Uh, so these are all fall, fall under Nabat. <coughs> So it has the dimensions that we talked of and, and other dimensions, maybe certain shapes, but it also has numu and that is growth. So there's continuous growth until a certain point and then you know, there's, there's growth up and down. So that's the second. The third is, is hayawan. Hayawan uh, broadly termed as the animal kind or the animal kingdom, the animal species. So under hayawan will fall, fall um, you know, reptiles, insect, uh, insect kind, the normal animal species, etc., etc., and it's it's very vast and very wide. So, what can we add on to that? So, we have the dimensions. We have numu, which is growth. So, it has the uh, you know size. It has growth, and we add on to hayawan. We add on to that taharuk uh, or haraka, and that is motion, movement. So, hayawan can move about. It's not fixed in a specific location. It goes here, it goes there, it grows, uh, uh, it, it has life, it, it has a life cycle, and it, it eats, etc., etc. And it moves about. So that's taharruq. So these creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have a specific programming. I'd like to use the word programming because we are living in this 21st century. So it has a specific programming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and specific purpose for which it was, has been created. And together with its creation and its, and its purpose for creation, 
Allah says, and let us remind ourselves of the ayat of Quran in Surah Al-Isra. وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ Subhanallah. And there's nothing except that it is in the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, mankind, you do not understand. لا تفقهون تسبيحهم. You cannot perceive and understand the, the creation uh, or, or the, the, the tasbih and the glorification of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But all of the creation of Allah are in the tasbih of Allah. So when the birds are chirping, when the ra'ad and the lightning and the thunder is thundering and lightning is, is uh, shining, so in that thunder is the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But mankind in our finite uh, knowledge, uh, Allah says, you have been only given very, uh, 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 you know, uh, a small amount of knowledge, very minuscule and minute amount of knowledge. We don't have time to actually uh, expound on how little knowledge we have. Suffice to say, the example would be, for example, if we dip our finger in, in, in the ocean and when we lift our finger up, that one drop of water that comes out, uh, that is our knowledge in, in uh, relation to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's only for our, uh, you know, uh, visualization or understanding purposes. However, that is even not possible to give uh, a, such a description in terms of our knowledge compared to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nevertheless, so the creation of Allah, they have their set programming. Uh, the, the honeybee knows exactly. And this program of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is set for it from the very beginning, first, from the very first bee till the last bee before Qiyamah. And likewise, the very first cow, to the very last cow, from the very first and in the inception of that specific creation, that programming has been pre-designed, it has been set and downloaded for them, and they know exactly Allah has, uh, has, uh, has revealed or has, Allah has commanded the bee to, uh, to uh, with specific mo motions and movements and to do specific things. So that programming is specific. Then we come to the fourth creation and that is us in San. That is us in San. So we have size, we have Numu that is growth, and we have Taharruk which is movement, motion. And we add on to this here, Quwa idrakiya, And that is the perception or mind or intellect that Allah has given us. That makes us the greatest of Allah's creation, the paragon of Allah's creation. So look, the hayawan has the very same thing. They, they eat, they drink, they urinate, they defecate, they reproduce. So all of these things, we also do the same thing because uh, from one uh, perspective, we also fall under the animal species, the animal species as well. But Allah has given us a certain uh, speciality which He has not given the others and that is Quwa idrakiya, And that is the mind or the intellect to be able to perceive, to be able to make decisions, to be able to make choices, to be able to understand uh, and reflect. Allah says, Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a. Allah has removed you from the bellies of your mother, you understood nothing and knew nothing. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةِ And has given you your hearing and your, your sight and your, your hearts. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that you may uh, be grateful to Allah, you may recognize Allah, you may worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what Allah has given us. Now when this man does not use that which Allah has given him, his faculties, for the acquiring of that knowledge which will bring him closer to Allah and upon the obedience of his maker, then this insan will lower himself from that lofty position of being mukarram, of being the paragon of Allah's creation, of being the, the best of Allah's creation, the center of Allah's creation. He will be removed from that, from that position and that status to the lowers of the low, the asfalus safilin. As Allah says, لَقَدْ خَلَقَنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ التَّقْوِيمِ ثُمَّ رَدَدَنَاهُ إِلَىٰ أَسْفَلِ أَسْفَلِ سَافِلِينَ Allah says, we, re, we, will, we will send him uh, right down to the lowest of the low, low the lowest of the low, subhanAllah. <coughs> and that is when this insan does not use his, this faculties that Allah has given him to, uh, to, to acquire that which will bring him closer to Allah, and be in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We come to the ayat of the verse of Quran which we have recited, and that uh, the, uh, the, the surah of Quran which we have recited, and that is Surah Al Asr. Wal Asr, inna al insana lafi khus, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And Allah takes a qasam by time. So, subhanallah, our, our scholars have given us the most, uh, the most uh, 
beautiful uh, description of of mankind ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ السَّافِرِينَ The ayah which I recited earlier on, just wanted to correct that. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ التَّقْوِيمِ ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ السَّافِرِينَ So, anyway, coming back to Surah Al-Asr, Allah says that uh, uh, Allah takes a qasam by time. So, the, uh, Imam, Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah has said that if the most valuable thing of man is time, the biggest investment of man is time, and then he says, يَبْنَا آدَمْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ أَيَّامٍ Oh mankind, you are time, your day, you are just but time. So, فَإِذْ كُلَّ مَنْ قَضَى يَوْمٌ قَإِنْ قَضَى Every time a, a day of yours passes, a portion of you has passed. So, and you are getting closer to your, your death. Getting closer to your end, subhanAllah. So, you are just but time. And yet Allah takes a qasam and an oath on time. وَالْعَصْرِ By time. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ Verily, mankind is in khasara, is in loss. Why? Because just by the passage of time, we are in loss already. But now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to take and the favor of Allah is such that He wants to remove us from this, this position whereby we are in loss of time. So Allah says, how can we be saved from that khasara, from that loss? Allah says, Allah says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَصَّوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَصَّوا بِالصَّبْرِ Except those who have iman and they, they couple iman with a'mal salihah. They have Iman La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and they couple this Iman with A'mal and that is to be in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of our own will and our own accord that which are what the faculties that Allah has given us. And together with this year, وَتَوَصَّوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَصَّوا بِالصَّبْرِ Bring others onto the right path of Haqq and bring others onto the right path of Sabr and that is to be patient upon our good A'mal. Inshallah, we'll wrap up with this year. Imam Shafi rahimahullah says, that if Allah had revealed no surah of the Qur'an, nothing else of the Qur'an besides just this one chapter and that is Surah Al-Asr. Wal-Asr, inna al-insana lafi khusr, illa al-ladhina aman wa amil salihati wa tawassaw bil-haqq wa tawassaw bil-sabr. It would have been sufficient for the hidayah and the guidance of mankind because the message of this ayah, of this uh, chapter of Qur'an is so deep. We need to ponder on this year and we need to bring ourselves into reality, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. It was the practice of Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Whenever they would meet each other and have a discussion and talk with each other, interact with each other, when they departed, they would recite Surah Al-Asr to each other, reminding themselves of their purpose, of their creation, and the reality of this life, and that we are in khasara, we just are allowing time to pass. We need to, remind, we need to be steadfast on iman and a'mal, and we need to remind others also of the same. May Allah bless us all. May Allah bless you all. May Allah accept from us all. Subhanallah bihamdihi. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا رحم الرحيمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته